Mark Zuckerberg went all in with the distraction of insisting on a rebrand from Facebook to Meta, betting all his chips on the metaverse. Now ChatGPT suddenly steered the entire world towards AI, and the Meta CEO now has to play catch up. On this episode of AI Focus, we'll explore his plans for how Meta adapts to AI. We'll also look at Llama, which will one day give users the ability to create their own ChatGPT. We'll learn about Meta's text-to-video generator, and then we save the best for last, which is Meta's new SAM model that provides the framework for how AI will visually see the world. We've got a lot to get into, so without further ado, let's get into it. Zuckerberg told the media this week that Meta sees, quote, an opportunity to introduce AI agents to billions of people in ways that will be useful and meaningful. Meta is exploring chat experiences in WhatsApp and Messenger, visual creation tools for posts in Facebook and Instagram and ads, and video and multimodal experiences as well. Zuckerberg has a vision for these tools to be used by regular people and businesses alike. He also says that he expects a lot of interest to generate over customer support and business messaging once they master how to deliver it. Then of course, he added in the metaverse, where avatars, objects, and worlds will be much easier to create, according to him. Keep that metaverse dream alive, Zuck. The meta CEO also claimed they're no longer dragging their feet in the AI race, and generative AI products will be out in the coming months touching, quote, literally every single one of their products. And of course, I'll be reporting on them once they do. For instance, AI could speed up WhatsApp's customer support business. In addition, Meta plans to cut 21,000 jobs in a plan to make 2023 the year of efficiency. The year of efficiency has started off well for Meta, with a 3% revenue growth in the first quarter. And Zuckerberg attributes this to its AI-powered Reels feature, he said time spent on Instagram had risen 24% due to this feature alone, with people sharing reels 2 billion times per day, and its meta AI investments made this possible. On an earnings call, Zuckerberg said, our investment in recommendations and ranking systems has driven a lot of the results that we're seeing today across our discovery engine, reels and ads. But what major moves has meta already made in the AI space? Well, what if you wanted to make your own chat GPT? Meta's working on that. Meta's first development of three we're going to cover in this video is Llama, the company's 65 billion parameter large language model. And Llama stands for Large Language Model and Meta AI. There's no actual Llama. It's a collection of language models ranging in size from 7 billion to 65 billion parameters that were trained on large amounts of public data. As you can see here, Llama surpasses ChatGPT3 on many benchmarks. It's also quite competitive with Google's Palm language model, which has about 540 billion parameters, much more than Llama's 65 billion parameters. As a result, Llama is a much more optimized model that requires much less computational power. That's impressive. But this LLM is not like ChatGPT or BARD in that you can talk to it. Instead, it's a research tool where people can use prompt engineering to help advance work in the field of AI. Right now, it's strictly for academic research on a case-by-case -case basis because there are some kinks that need working out before wide public use. You know those kinks OpenAI doesn't care about, like hallucinations or bias? Llama is used for many reasons including investigating natural language comprehension, examining the capabilities and limitations of existing language models, the enhancement of language models, and essentially the creation of language models themselves. But what's really interesting is the fact that Meta opened its language model to the public at all, even if it is restricted. This means that one day, everyone will have access to this groundbreaking AI model technology, making a way for people to develop new AIs of their own. That's right, you could make the next generative AI showstopper. Just don't kill us with it. By the way, if you're enjoying this content and want to stay updated on all the latest AI news and updates, please feel free to subscribe to the channel. Now back to the video. Next, Meta has an AI model that turns text to video as well. Its name could use a little work as it's called make a video. The system uses images with descriptions to learn what the world looks like 
and it also uses videos to learn how the world moves. With this data, you can generate oddly charming videos from just text. Check out the images created from these prompts. A teddy bear painting a portrait, a robot dancing in Times Square, cat watching TV with a remote in hand, a fluffy baby sloth with an orange knitted hat trying to figure out a laptop close up. You can even add motion to a single image. Check this out. That is really cool. And you can even add variations to an input video as you can see here. Meta is also preparing our AI to be able to see and recognize objects in a process called image segmentation. And it's doing this with its Segment Anything model, or SAM for short. But before we get into how it works, we need to know why it's needed. Basically, in order for an AI to understand the visual world around it, it needs to be able to label everything it sees and separate every object from each other for recognition purposes. This is segmentation, the process of dividing an image into smaller regions where each region corresponds to a specific object or background in the image. Even though it's an image processing model, SAM is similar to models like GPT and BARD in that it's a foundational model. A foundational model is any model trained on broad data that can be adapted to a wide range of downstream tasks. Foundation models are trained on billions of data points, but the problem was that such data did not exist for image segmentation. When it comes to computer vision, even though we have billions of images on the web, none of them are labeled with bounding boxes or what they call segmentation masks, making useful segmentation training impossible. So Meta built the data. It's called a data engine, and this is what would train its SAM model. The data engine collected training data in three stages, with stage one being called assisted manual. Here, Meta hired professional annotators to label images with segmentation masks, and the annotators labeled any image they could find. By the way, a mask in this case is any specific portion of an image isolated from the rest of the image. In this stage, the data engine collected over 4 million masks from 120,000 images. The next stage was called the semi-automatic stage, where the goal was to increase the diversity of the data set. Here, the same team was presented with already annotated images and asked to label anything else they could find. An additional 5.9 million masks were collected here. The last stage was called fully automatic and didn't involve any humans. Here, Sam was prompted and given a 32 by 32 grid of points, and for each point, predicted a set of masks that may correspond to valid objects. They applied this process to 11 million images that Meta previously collected and got 1.1 billion high resolution masks. Here are some images where Sam predicted more than 500 masks. So that's the final data set called SA1B that's now publicly available under a permissive license. It has six times more images and 400,000 more masks than any other segmentation data set. And it was this data set that trained the SAM model complete with prompt engineering and zero shot learning. Now SAM works with three main components like so. The image encoder takes an image and computes its embedding. Then the user can start prompting the image for segmentation masks, which initiates the second component, the prompt encoder. It takes a prompt, which can be a set of points, a bounding box, another mask, or maybe some simple text, and outputs a prompt embedding. This embedding is combined with the image embedding and fed into the decoder that predicts segmentation masks. Check out this example right here from Meta's demo page. First, the image is uploaded to the model, and once it's uploaded, you can prompt the image in several ways. Okay, now the user selects points in the image and Sam will find a segment that corresponds to the selection. You can also prompt an image by using a bounding box. Here the user selects an area around the lightsaber and the model correctly predicts that the user wants the actual lightsaber. Lastly, you can click on everything and let Sam find all objects automatically. What do you think about Meta's future in the AI space? I think they're late, but what they're doing is pretty innovative. Disagree? Let me know in the comments. In the meantime, click that video on the screen to watch something you haven't seen. And thanks for visiting AI Focus.